Welcome, Mary Janet. Mary Janet, yeah. Mary Janet Butterfly. Butterly. Oh, right. <laughs> my, my mistake. No, 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 I no. really did read it as butterfly. No, a lot, a lot of people do. It's okay. Now, what is that name? Do we know where you come from? What is that an English name? It's an Irish name, actually. It's an Irish name. You look almost classically so. Oh, thank you. You know, auburn hair, blue eyes, <laughs> pale skin, the dark or the black Irish, you know? Yeah. So cool. Um, thank you for coming today. Yeah, of course. Uh, for this go-see. I'm just going to take you through. I'm going to go through your book. Okay, perfect. And talk to you about what it is to be a model and your career so far. Okay, perfect. Thank you very much. Great. So, uh, where do you come from? Um, so, I'm originally from Tampa, Florida. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I was born and raised there my whole life. Okay. And when did you first think about the possibility that you could model? Um, well, I was actually eight uh, years old. You were a child model. No, I wasn't a child. I, I wasn't exactly a child model. Um, but this weird man approached my family on the beach and said I could be a model. It's usually weird men of a certain <laughs> age. The yeah. model yesterday, he was in his 50s and he was slightly weird. Yeah. But he, was he a photographer? Um, no, he uh, ran an agency, but we found out later that it wasn't super legit. Mm -hmm. um, but my parents did research, and um, yeah, but he put the idea in my head, and then I just sort of at eight. With it. Yeah, at eight. Because that's even weirder, right? Because you're you're a bona fide child. You know, I'm a child. I'm like, how can I even look attractive <laughs> in any way? Like I'm eight. Like how could you model at all? No, clothes? E exactly. <laughs> but. What did your parents, how did your parents react to all of this? Did it, so it, it sparked the idea rather than the reality. Exactly. It planted the seed, but it wasn't, that wasn't. They didn't follow up, of course. You didn't, yes, you didn't start off child modeling or whatever no. or whatever. So when did it then resurface and at what age? Um, so it resurfaced, resurfaced, excuse me, um, at That's 12, okay. not too, not too later. Yeah, but, um, only four years. Yeah, but 12 is uh, when I went to my mom and I basically said, Mom, I want to try out this modeling thing. You know, I was 12 years old and 5'7", so I thought, Oh, Jesus. All right. You were ready. Yeah, no, So physically you were ready and you, you had, you've been through puberty? Yeah, exactly. Early puberty, sort of? Yeah, totally. I was super tall, looked like this, but younger. I looked like a junior. I didn't look like a child. Oh, right, yes, exactly. So, um, you knew when it was right. You, did you know from looking in the mirror? Um, I didn't know from looking in the mirror, but I could tell that I, from like elementary school to middle school, like I changed, like the way my face looked just mm -hmm. changed completely. And were you always seen as pretty and given that kind of approval early growing up? You were a pretty child. Um, not really. Um, really? <laughs> it's, it's actually kind of funny because I'm... Um, I feel like almost my mom or my parents didn't want for me to be seen as like a pretty child because they always dressed me in like boy clothes. Mm -hmm. I had short hair my whole life up until I was 11 or 12 when I was like, mom, no, I'm growing out my hair because it was literally like a pixie cut. Like, and then I had a bob throughout elementary school. But you must have looked super, super cute like that. I mean, I'm sure I looked cute, yeah. but I was getting made fun of in school as like, uh, yeah, because I just, I was tall, skinny, and I had a bob haircut. Like, I was just like, wow. And so, yeah, what, were, so what were the, what were the hot girls? What did they look like? Were they blonde? They were blonde, long tan, hair. long blonde hair. Um, with, you know, mommies that braided their hair before school and cute little clothes and Pink. short. Short. And not towering stuff. over all the boys. Right, I see. Yeah. So being a tall girl had its disadvantages. Super. It had its disadvantages when I was younger and now I absolutely love absolutely. it. Absolutely. And I would, I would never, I almost want to be taller. It paid off. No, I love being tall now. I love looking down at men. That's so <laughs> cool. I'm sure they love looking up at you too, MJ. <laughs> So, um, so did you come into your own in terms of uh, boy, re boys' reactions to you at a certain point? And when did that happen? Um, Obviously, you're a model now, so they see you as a, a completely different being, right? Yeah. You are now transformed <laughs> into something unattainable and perfection. Um, well, it's interesting because... Um, 
the same guys that, you know, made fun of me or, you know, didn't want to talk to me are now sliding in my DMs on Instagram. And it's just, it's so, like, weird having to, like, I don't know, to realize that just because now I'm a model and now I have this title over me that Mm. now their opinion has changed of me. It's That's understandable. It's like I'm the same person. Society is terrible that way. People are sheep. Yeah. Um, Have you kept in touch with any of your old friends at all? Oh, yeah. I have a lot of um, old friends from home. Um, I still have my best friend, like my childhood best friend, who we grew up uh, down the street from each other, actually. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, we're still in contact, and she's in uh, college now in Florida. Okay, that's cool. So you, at 12, decided to approach various agencies, right? Yes, with my mother. (laughs) With your mom? Yeah. So she was all for it, even though you were young. Yeah, no, I mean, my mom was definitely, you know, hesitant and definitely wanted to be there the whole process. But, um, you know, she, obviously, she knew me well and she knew that even at 12, I I knew what I wanted to do mm. and I wasn't going to take no for an answer. What star sign are you? I'm asking everybody. I'm a Taurus. Okay. Is that determined? Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Stubborn? Yeah. And you're going to get what you want. Exactly. That's good. That's a good trait to have, to model. Um, so... Take me to the next stage. So you you went and visited local model agencies in the Tampa, Florida area? Yes, the Tampa, Florida area. Okay. And there was an immediate positive reaction? Yeah, there was. um, Actually, no, it wasn't really immediate. Um, I went to about seven different agencies. Surprisingly, there's seven agencies Mm -hmm. in Tampa. Mm -hmm. Uh, And only two called me back. Um, I met with one... They had a good vibe, and then I met with another, and it's just, you know when you just have that gut feeling that you're just where you're supposed to be? Mm-hmm. That's just the feeling that I got with um, the, who is now um, your mother my manager. Now. Oh, your manager, okay. Yeah. So how does that work? You, you, does the mon- mother agent or the manager become the, the person with whom you build a career from the beginning? Yeah, I mean, pretty much, and they're just the person that's always there when, you know, you're in, if you're in trouble or when something really good happens, they're the first person you want to call. They really just become, like, your foundation. And do they get a percentage of all the money that you make, even when you get to IMG oh. and the big time? Oh, yeah. They do from the beginning, so from you, you sign beginning. a contract mm-hmm. with them. And is that for perpetuity? Is that for the life, your life? Are you earning life oh, as a model? No, How no, does that it, work? It's, it's not for um, the earning life. Um, I mean, I do have a contract with her. Um, I, I don't know for how many, I probably should, um, but mm. I signed it when I was so young, um, mm. for a certain number uh, of years, and she gets a certain percentage. Um, but after a while, the contract goes away, and I have to sign it again. But I'm going to sign because, I mean, she's done amazing things for me. So. And did she get you, did she take you to all the various next levels? Oh, she's been along with me on all the levels. She's the only reason I'm here right now. She's, um, okay. she's amazing. Had um, she done it before for other girls? Uh, yes. She used to work for Elite um, in New York mm-hmm. um, in uh, the late 80s. Okay, so she had a lot of experience. A lot of experience, yes. It's funny, she actually knows my booker at my agency oh, wow. now from years and years and years ago. Okay, so she went out there to have a sort of another life? Yeah. And then she... she sort of got back into the work of booking and agenting? Yeah, yeah. she had a family, and then um, now all of her kids are grown up and she right. her own agency. Right, that's so cool. It's, I got so lucky. And how many, gir- how many other girls do you think she manages and looks after as well as yourself? Um, she only looks after about, like, ten other models because she mainly works with actors now. She's oh, okay. switched since, you know, I've been signed with her for six years, and her agency's uh, switched a lot more... F- She's moved more towards acting, Mm -hmm. um, and she has a lot of successful actors um, with her. But had you ever thought of making that switch yourself? Um, I take a couple acting classes. You do. Is that where you're going? Um, No, I I I definitely want to pursue modeling full time. But how old are you now? I'm 18. Okay. Um, But you know, I'm totally down for an acting job here and there. Mm -hmm. But it's not it's not my passion the way modeling is. So did this manager just make the introduction to IMG? For this last casting, you know, this last time that you've joined an agency, was it your manager who called them up? How did that happen? How did you go from the local Tampa modeling to New York in the big time? Um, well, uh, so when I was, um, so I signed with the local agency when I was 12, and then when I was uh, 13, she wanted to get me some experience, so I actually signed with Next uh, in Miami, because Miami 
when you're a Florida model, that's where you go. It's sort of like the second tier city. Mm -hmm. um, and so I just built my book there, um, got experience in front of the camera. And then two weeks after I turned 14, she set me up with appointments with agencies that I'd only heard of on America's Next Top Model. Like I was oh, wow. freaking out. She got me meetings with pretty much everyone. And then, yeah, the meetings went well. And then it was basically like I just had to choose between agencies. I just, I couldn't believe it. That so that was at 14. So from 14 to 18, fill that in for me. So 14 to 18, um, I was still going to school, um, living in Florida with my family. You know, there isn't really a lot of work for a 14-year-old uh, model. So it was more just like developing me, getting my book together. My agency here told me from the start that I was going to need a lot of patience and that, mm. you know, I have a lot of time and that patience is very important. Um, but yeah, so I moved here when I, after I got my GED when I was 16, I moved here when I was 17 with my mom, of course, because she was not going to let me move to New York by myself uh, before I was 18. And uh, You don't have to look at the lens. Okay, I don't. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> no, I said, I, I, told, I told MJ that she should generally have her face when that we're way. talking as opposed to you know just a profile yeah but you don't actually have to look okay. at them <laughs> okay sorry we can have a conversation um yeah continue so um so so yeah so i moved here when i was uh, 17 and um i've been working here okay. ever since and your mom was happy to up sticks and accompany you on this adventure oh my mom's an adventurous That's person at heart so she and she used to actually live here for about uh, 10 years in New York City, so... Would she, she consider herself a stage mother? No, okay, that is the thing, that <laughs> is the thing. What's the differentiation? Okay, my mom is great. She's so supportive, but she's not annoying about it. She's not like a momager. She's not a Kris Jenner. Mm. Like, um, when I'm on set, when I was on set and I was younger, um, you know, she, she's a computer programmer, so she would mm -hmm. just be in the corner on her little computer. Nice. Um, but yeah, but she definitely thinks it's cool because it's just so not her style, mm -hmm. like the whole modeling thing, mm -hmm. so. But she enjoys she it. it cute. It's like cool and she loves to come with. And what about dad? Um, dad thinks Is it's he cool. Proud? He's very, very proud, super supportive. Yeah, no, my dad's like awesome. He's great. Mm -hmm. So what about uh, your love life? How is that oh, going? My love life. Is that easy or, or complicated? Um, it's, it's, it's actually complicated. You know, people think that, oh, if you're a model, guys must be Begging. Lining the streets. Yeah, exactly. And it's, it's so not like that. I feel like it's almost harder because you have guys that just want to date you because you're a model. Mm -hmm. Then you have guys that don't want to date you because you're a model and you have underwear pictures on the internet. And they're like, oh, no. And they, right. their insecurities come out. Yeah. And then you have guys that just want to conquer you, that mm -hmm. just want to say, oh, I got with a model. Mm -hmm. I've actually had that happen to me. You did? Yeah, I actually had a guy who... Um, I, I got sent a screenshot of messages of a guy I was seeing. But you um, fancied him. Yeah, I really liked him. Mm -hmm. And he and him and a guy friend of mine. And the guy pretty much was like, oh, never been with a model before. I'm just trying to... F oh, her. right. And I was just like, oh, well, you're never going to be with a model now. Exactly. But he fucked like, okay. like that one right up. Yeah, I know. Yeah, I was like, goodbye. <laughs> <laughs> so... So you haven't had a long, you don't have a long-term boyfriend lover that you have spanned years with? No, um, I actually just got out of an 11-month relationship um, okay. about a month ago. And is that the maximum in terms of time? Do you think? Yeah, that was the longest. So was that the biggest love affair so far of your life? Definitely, for and, sure. And tell me why it ended, if you don't mind, if it's that, that's ended, not too personal. Um, what do you think were the dynamics that made that come to an end after Ooh. 11 months. I hope, so he you're right. I hope he doesn't see this. <laughs> well, he might do, but it's interesting anyway. He'll probably learn something. Yeah, um, okay, so pretty much, um, we were just at completely different stages uh, in our lives, um, you know. Where was he? Here? Here, yeah. Okay, he, this is all New, New York. York. Yeah. yeah, this is all New York. Um, you didn't leave a, a, any teenage boyfriends back in Tampa? No, I would never. And any model as a hometown boyfriend, I kind of like recommend her. To live her own life and... And dump the poor bastard? Sadly, yes. Dump <laughs> because <poor> <laughs> Because you don't, you don't think he can hack it? You don't think... Or either she would want to... Is it a, 
It's a question of growth, right? You don't think... Exactly. I just, I always think if it's meant to be, you guys will find each other anyway. again. You know. But, um, yeah, so, so with my last relationship, it was just, um, I felt that we were definitely on uh, different maturity levels. Mm. And was he your age or older? He was older. So men are, are immature much older than you. I mean, the women, generally. Yeah, no, and, and even though he was older, I could definitely still feel... That you were in superior in, the matu- <laughs> I don't know in was, maturity In terms. maturity, yeah, no, I, no, I think I was. And where he was mature, I was immature, as in he was mature in relationships because he had been in long-term relationships before, mm. where I was not, but yet... What was the gap? That, see, it's... Um, what it's was the she, years? Give me years. What, what, what was the what was the difference in age? Oh, oh my god! You were eighteen. He was how old? You can tell me. He was thirty-five. Thirty-five. Okay, so he was a man yes. or a man boy, man child. Yeah. <laughs> and if you saw a picture of him, you'd be like, "Wow, is he nineteen? You never know. You'd be like, "Is oh, he nineteen? He, he was very young. Looking. Very, very young looking, and very, very like young, young acting, at heart. young at heart. Exactly. Does that matter? You wanted because. Young at heart is a good thing. Mm-hmm. He'd see, he, where did he lack in the other, in the other ways, in the, in the maturity stakes? What do you think? Is there an area that you can identify or could you put it into words? Um, just, just... Is it emotionally that he was, that he was immature? I, mean, it's, I don't think it was emotionally. I don't hmm. think he, I don't think he was, hmm. Okay, I think he was, immature to the point where he didn't have a lot of like empathy for others because he was immature so in some situations he only thought about himself Mm. as immature people do Mm. um and i just felt he was immature and sort of um can i just say that there were lots of old people who and young people vice versa i don't necessarily believe that age is is what makes you thoughtful about others or not. I think you can be a child and still kind and loving and considerate to others. Yeah. And I think you can be uh, very advanced in years and wisdom and still be extremely selfish and narcissistic. Um, but I understand your general idea yeah. Yeah, that with age comes a, uh, a, a, the experience of living will tell you and show you that it can't always be about you. But on the flip side of that, a lot of great narcissists do very well in life no, and function at a very high level. And good for them, but I don't want to date them. Fair enough. Mm. That's very wise of you. <laughs> <laughs> so what are you looking for in a man? Okay, so um, if, if a man was to want to date you, what would he have to describe him? Um, in my mind, he's very, very smart. Um, so it, he's clever first? He leads with clever, clever? Or does he have to be... An Adonis with high IQ. Does he have to look a certain way? What's the first thing that you would look for in a meeting? So you're at a dinner party and there are, you know, a congregation of men and women. What do you think, what hooks you in, what uh, appeals? Okay, so I'm, I think it's unfair to say levels of of attractiveness don't matter because obviously they do. But at the same time, I'm not attracted to the stereotypical sort of a male model, clean cut, pretty. I'm not... I'm into very, very specific things on people. If, mm. Like if I like, if your smile is slightly uneven mm. and I just find it attractive, like, I don't know, stuff like that will really? ring in. It's, it's, so they don't have to just be at the pretty face? No, it, that really, I, I like interesting and mm. I'm, when I'm attracted to someone, it's very, very specific things. Wow. And it could be anything. So yeah. It doesn't have to be physical. It doesn't even really have to be physical. So what attracted you, you to your... X. Okay, well, with him, it was physical because um. he, he was, he's very, very attractive. I will admit that he's very, very attractive. Was he model? Uh, he was a model in the past. He was a past model. X model. X model. Okay. Um, so but, he was extremely handsome. Yeah, um, he's very cute. Um, he's ethnically, he was, um, oh God, I hope we don't mess this up. Um, he was um, Malaysian and English. So okay. it's very, very tan mm. skin, but and had exotic. like green eyes. Different to you. Very beautiful, yeah. He was very beautiful. Yeah. So stunningly beautiful. So that that's what drew you to him. Initially, it was yeah, like, oh my initially, god. Initially, I was just like, oh, who is that? Oh my goodness, yes. 
And then what did he have to do next? Well... Did he like you in the offing? Did you, was it important for you to feel desired as well? How, did that's you, very important to me. I need to feel... I, I, it's, uh, I need attention in a relationship. I, I need to feel important. Mm -hmm. For sure. And was he, did he give you off that vibe immediately? To you? He, he definitely gave that so vibe. So he off. zoned in on you. It was a mutual attraction. Right away it was a mutual attraction, yes. Right, okay. So he didn't have to do, was it sort of, did he have to do much or was it, were you his to lose? Or was it. <laughs> Honestly, words, it was just like, you, I think. At what point do you, you want to be with someone? At one point does that happen in that, in that encounter do you think is it instant well, or for me it was instant mm. and I feel like for him it was instant as well the the attraction was definitely instant mm. um I wasn't sure until a few hangouts mm -hmm. into it that I wanted to you know take the next step into a right. relationship and so how, what did he how did he how did how did he court you what did he have to do for the net for the hangout how, how did you so you went from meeting uh, to to taking it the next day. Okay, well, um, see, he had met me um, two nights previously, and then he uh, messaged me on Instagram, actually, okay. and said, oh, it was super nice to meet you, you know, sorry, it was just, you know, a real quick meeting, but I would love to take you out on an actual date, if you would like that. Oh, that's so, so nice. So that impressed me right away, because yes. I thought it was bold, and I liked that he just asked me to hang out. It wasn't... Because I, I hate texting and direct messaging with people. I, mm -hmm. I'm not good. I don't sound good over text. Oh, okay. I'm much more of an in-person kind of person. So. so how would it be done as an alternative? Because I thought this generation only text and I, I message. So how would it have been otherwise? Would, it, how, would he call you? Would someone I didn't I've, call I've, you? Would no, that be weird? It, honestly... Even though I would like a phone call, I still would think when I saw my phone, it would I'd be, be like, weird. that's weird. Why are you calling me? Even though I would like it, I'd still be like, that's a little bit weird. Because so, who calls? That's right. But it wouldn't even appeal in a sort of freaky way. <laughs> like the crooked <laughs> smile. No, no, no. It would. It would for yeah. sure. That, that's so funny, though. Mm. That calls it's interesting. Weird, it is interesting. No, Brain. I get made fun of for leaving voicemails. People are like, you're so lame. You leave voicemails. I'm like, <laughs> what? Wow. That's, that's yeah, no. That is funny. So, okay, so he I, IG messaged you and that was good. Yes, I liked that. That was better than texting. He scored a point for the IG message over the text. Yes. Okay, it wasn't quite one run of the, the mill then. Yeah, no, yeah. it wasn't quite, quite um, run the, of the mill. And yeah. I just liked how immediately mm. first message it was, do you want to get together? Yeah, and, and you knew immediately push. he liked you and that was that. Yeah, exactly. That's fantastic. So um, now that you've split up, what what happens next? I mean, well, um, I'm do you on look my for love? Now. Do you like do you like being in a relationship? Or, because I've spoken to a few models now, and the general impression I get is that they are quite happy to be concentrating and focusing on their careers without a guy. It's not the pr priority. Some have boyfriends, but it looks like they're so sort of driven and focused on the job at hand, which involves travel, involves not having that much time. Um, for boys, but you're different. You you like to have a boyfriend. Um. Okay. So it's it's interesting because mm. I do love to travel with modeling. I love to go to different places. I love when I'm busy, but I will say that I'm not gonna say I prefer to have a boyfriend. But at the same time, when you have a job where nothing is consistent, mm. it's really nice to come home to the same person. Right. Every it's security. Day. It's a sense of home and and connection yeah exactly and did you ever find it lonely in the periods when you didn't have somebody is it a lonely job it's a very lonely job which i will say if keeping a boyfriend if having a boyfriend makes you sane and keeps you not lonely then i think it's great to have a hometown boyfriend or whatever mm -hmm. but um yeah no it, i i definitely there are times when i'm lonely especially when i'm traveling and I can't talk to my friends because the time difference is mm -hmm. different. It, it gets lonely for sure. Now, let me just check. I've just had a, a horrible suspicion that I didn't, I didn't turn that on. No, I did. That's good. Oh, my God. That the can whole, you imagine? That the whole but interview. <laughs> those technical things can really mess you up. But we're okay, so we can we're continue. Okay. All right, good. <laughs> so tell me about what you're wearing today. 
what I'm wearing today. Okay, so... This is very classic, but watch out for the mic. Oh, that's right, the mic. Okay, so I'm wearing a leather jacket. Yes. Urban Outfitters. Okay, how much? Uh, two... That's good for a leather jacket. One to two hundred, uh -huh. somewhere. Um, this, then... suit, this suits you. Thank you. No, I, I like it. I love a good... Leather jacket. Love a good motorcycle jacket. This is my friend's. I don't know where she got it from. It's just uh -huh. a regular black tank. Usually black. Always black. Uh-huh. And then uh, these are from Urban Outfitters as well. Okay. Just um, they're called a uh, girlfriend fit because uh -huh. they're like a boyfriend fit, but they're a little bit tighter. Right. Just cute little graphics and stuff. Okay. And then I was wearing uh, my Doc Martens. Black boots. Classic. The classic black boots. Classic. And again, black. this is a uniform that works very well. Oh. Right. Yeah, it always works for castings and stuff. That's so cool. Um, so, what do you want to achieve now in your career? And where have you gotten? Give me a percentage, and where do you where where is there to go? Like a percentage of how like completed I am. Well, yeah, where are you in that um, ambition scale? So a part of me, part of me is really proud of myself and wants to say twenty percent. Then the other side of me is like, no, I want so much more. Okay. You know, I'm only eighteen. Yeah. I I think I'm at ten percent to be honest. Like I don't even think I'm a third of the way there. Okay. Yet. So what are the um, the uh, what are the, what's it called? What are the milestones that you would suggest you're looking to achieve? Well, um, actually, I just crossed a really big milestone in January. I got um, upgraded from the development board to the main board oh, wow. at IMG. So that was huge That's for me. Big that step. was a, a big milestone for me. Um, so you've done four years of modeling so far. Yes, almost five. Almost five. Okay, yeah. Yeah. Um, so that will be a big milestone for me. Um, I really want to go back to Japan, actually. Oh, you did a stint in Japan? Yeah, I did when I was 15, and I would wow, love to go back. Wow, that's so young to go. Did your mom go with you? Yeah, my mom went oh, with me. Oh, she did? Me. Yeah. Because that is, uh, is a sort of famous... <laughs> I'm just wondering that way. That was a, that's a famous sort of uh, rite of passage, if you like, for yeah, models. Exactly. They go to Japan, and you are worked like crazy, right? Oh, yes. <laughs> so give me a typical sort of schedule of a day. Typical they work very schedule. hard. The, the culture in Japan is, I will give them that, they are so hardworking. The government actually, um, like about five years ago, had to implement national holidays to get the people to stop working because they were working too hard. Like, mm -hmm. they, they're amazing. But um, when us Americans go over there, mm. it gets rough. Uh, yeah. But basically, a typical day, um, if you had a job, your job would usually take place in the morning. Because castings take place in the afternoon. So you would have a job. Usually the call time is between like 4 and 7 a.m. 4 a.m.? My roommate actually had a call time that was 3 a.m. And I'm, I was thinking in my head, that's nighttime. That's not morning. That's nighttime. That's in the middle of the night. <laughs> yeah. And um, so, but that was So usually, you're waking up at what time? Oh, of at a... least an hour, hour and a half to include traveling and stuff. So if your call time is 4, you're waking up at 3. Or 2.30. Or 2.30 a.m. Well, because you have to get there, too. Of course. That's crazy. I know. So what time did you go to bed the night before that? Well, um, the problem with Japan is that you work super early in the morning, but the castings will go to 11 o'clock at night, usually. Uh, a good day, a good day you'll be home at 9.30. A bad day you'll be home at 12. To wake up at 3. Yeah. You get three hours at night. Yeah. And I mean, you don't have a job every day. Oh, that's our 29 minutes. That's good. Let's let's pause. Okay. We're going to pause. Hold that thought. So, MJ, you were saying about the the, the schedule in Japan. So we were at yes. um, eleven o'clock at night, or eleven or twelve, nine on a good night, midnight on a bad night, to yes. wake up at three, four the next morning. So continue. What were you saying after that? So. Um... Yeah, and I mean, you don't have jobs every day, so you don't need to wake up at, you know, four every day. Um, so when you don't have a job, the castings usually start at around noon or 1 p.m. So when you didn't have a job, it was great because you could sleep until like 10. Mm -hmm. um, but the only problem with Japan is, is that, you know, we're models, so we still need to fit in an hour or two of exercise a couple of times a week. Or if you're me, like every day, I like to... Do you, you work out every day? Yes. Well, what, six, I, six times a week. I like to take like one day off as an excuse. A day of rest. Yeah. Uh, what do you do? 
Um, so I, I work out at Planet Fitness, mm-hmm. super luxurious, um, mm-hmm. but I, I do uh, weight training and then I do the elliptical for cardio. And you've done this all your model life? Um, no, no, not all my model life. I used to actually go to a studio um, by Bryant Park where I would do Pilates, um, but I just have a thing about overpriced workout classes. I feel like New York City is obsessed with mm-hmm. paying $40 for a group class. I'd rather just do it myself. Okay, great. Um, so, what was the Jap- Japanese stint? How many weeks or months did you do that for? Um, I was in Japan, I was in Tokyo for six weeks, and then I was in Osaka for three weeks. And how do you deal with the uh, language barrier? How yeah. Do, yeah, are there any stories that you can tell about working? The language barrier. Yeah, working it's, in a completely alien culture. It, it's crazy because the managers, so you go on castings with your managers. And your managers obviously are bilingual, so they talk to the casting people for you and tell them all about you, which is nice. But when you get a job, you're supposed to just figure it out on your own. Are the managers on set? No, the managers are only on the castings. So when you have a job, you go to the agency and they would hand you a packet. Because this was before, I guess it was before Google Maps came to Japan and they would literally give us maps of directions and say hey when you see this pharmacy make a right if you see this building you've gone too far and like pictures of the buildings to tell us you know how to get to our jobs and we would get on the jobs and if you didn't know what floor it was that would take like 30 minutes because you'd have to call your booker and it was it was really hard language barrier no wonder there were so many stories of models losing their minds it's so stressful, and especially because they're very, um, being on time is very important to them. And when you're in a country that you don't know, and you're taking a subway that you don't know, and you don't know what stop it is because you can't read the sign, you don't know what they're saying, and just not being able to read is also just very mm. difficult. So having said that, all of that, you enjoyed it enough to want to go back? Yes, well, because I, since I had such a knock at experience last time, I want to go back and have a good experience and actually... Conquer it. Actually conquer it and did hopefully you cry- on the weekends do uh, touristy stuff. Did you cry? Would every be day? bad if I said every day. Every single day? <laughs> every single day I cried. I hated it the first time. Wow. But good for you, right? No, I'm glad. You're tougher I'm, now. Yeah, no, I want to go back and I just want to like kick Tokyo's ass and like That's so it. cool. So who are the models that you look to? Are there any that you admire uh, and are inspired by? Um, yes. So there are actually uh, two specific models that I uh, look up to. Uh, I recent, when, when I was younger, I used to admire Carly Clausen, and I still do. And I think she's a fantastic role model and a fashion model. Um, mm-hmm. But career-wise, um, it's, it's, uh, I just I love Barbara Pelvin so much. I think, she, I think she's so beautiful. Mm-hmm. And then also I love Emily DiDonato because like, oh, wow. how could you just not love that face? Right. And um, for me, it's important to, not, not saying that, I mean, these women are supermodels. Not saying like I look like them, but it's, I feel like it's good to admire models that you could have a similar career path because, you know, they have the dark hair, the light Definitely. eyes, the pale skin, you know. Definitely. There's a, yeah. there's a mold that you can, there's exactly. a classic, you know, look that, yeah. that you're... That you're similar to. <laughs> so that's great. Um, and what would be a measure of success tomorrow? Would it be working with a particular photographer or magazine? Is it American Vogue? Like so many of the girls say that that's such a badge of, of making it somehow. Um, to me, honestly, being in any Vogue is a huge mm-hmm. uh, badge of honor. I mean, I would love to work with Stephen Klein, mm-hmm. Bruce Weber. Um, I would just... I, I I would love to work with photographers that I've just like I've looked up to their images my whole life. Mm. I would love to work with models that I admire. Like if I was on a shoot with Taylor Hill or someone, I would just oh, freak yeah? out. Like that would oh, be really? so cool. I should uh, I I work with her her sister. Yeah. McKinley. No no no. I was actually yeah. going to bring that up. I'm right. actually friends with McKinley. So oh, when I, so I know the shoot, and I was just like, me. She's yeah, so no. Lovely. I saw um, <clears throat> when I got the that we were going to do this. I went on your book, and I was like. Oh my god, I saw you uh, shot Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cool, cool. And she did a shoot with Bruce not yeah, so very no, long no, ago. Yeah, she did, so yeah. 
she got to live that dream. She's, she's checking out my bucket <laughs> list. She's, she's checking them but off. But she for has me. friends in the high places and in the family. Yeah. So that helps. Yeah. Who you do, who you know does help, obviously. No, I mean, it, I don't think it's so much who you know. You know, I feel like a lot of um, people that come from you know famous families or you know privileged families, uh, you know, they get a lot of flack, but it's. I feel like it's so much more being in the right place at the right time mm. than who you know because, you know, you can know a lot, a lot of people, but it's about the right person seeing you and it just clicks. So do you feel um, incumbent to get out and socialize and network and how do you do that? Is that a, a consideration for you? Um, it is somewhat, but I try to also realize that networking is important, but I... It's important to me that I'm never going to be the girl that you remember from that party last night. I'm going to be the girl that you remember when you, from the casting that you did two weeks ago. It's not, I don't want to meet people at parties. Mm. That's not my goal because I feel like when you meet people at a, in a certain setting, they always see you in that setting, and that's just not what I'm trying to do. That's great. Um, do you have any questions for a photographer? I always I ask have. the girls. I always ask the girls that because they don't get to ever know do no, they there's we so much we un get to ask. unsaid so much unsaid anything um, you need to know or would like to know from a photographer do you think you could ever be a model yes a model oh, I'd be a great model no I, no, I feel like I'd be a great photographer because I've seen it you know what that's I mean that's right I like that yeah. dynamic yeah because I know as a photographer what is necessary yeah and um, and I'm a people pleaser yeah I like to give of myself and make people happy. Uh, what do you think it, uh, are the qualities that make for a good model? Um, I think not being self-conscious is huge because if you're worried about looking stupid on a set or looking crazy or looking ugly, you're not gonna get a good picture. I've been on set with girls who are like, oh, I don't wanna do that, I look ugly. And I'm like, they want ugly. Mm -hmm. You know, so you can't be scared to just go to that next level and to get out of your comfort zone. Um, absolutely. Out, and yeah. out of your ego and out of your... Exactly. Yeah, that's absolutely true. That's very wise. Mm -hmm. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> and um, what do you look for in a photographer when you're working with them? Well, how, what's the... Let's, let's put it this way. What's the best and worst part of the job? Best and worst part of the job. Of a day, at the shoot. The best part, I will say, is the people I get to meet. Um, it's really great getting to be on set where everyone's goal is the same. We all just want to get a good picture. We're all inspired. That's why I love doing like magazine shoots and test shoots when everyone just comes together and there's no, there's no money involved. There's no incentive other than just to get a good picture. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, I think that that's great. Um, Traveling is another huge part that I love. Um, but being away from my family gets hard. Um, is that the hardest bit? Um, I, I'd say that that's probably the hardest, is having to be away from home. And, you know, at 17, having to, you know, leave all my friends and move to a new city. And I hated it in the beginning. I had no friends, and now I love it. But Did, did you live in a model apartment? Um, no, I actually, I just lived with my mom in, like, an oh, agency yes, apartment. Oh, yes, Okay, that's yeah. good. You have your mom there. Still. Yeah. No, no, no. My mom is at home in Florida. Okay. Yeah. So at what time, at what age did you just go off on your own and didn't um, need her chaperoning anymore? I think a month before my 18th birthday. Okay. She was like, well, you're turning 18 in a month. Right, and right. You're not going to change that much in a month, so. Right. Yeah. Okay. Um, what do you, oh, you never asked me the question. Oh, um, okay. <laughs> Other questions. Um, do you prefer to shoot on digital or film? That's a good question. I prefer shooting digitally. Really? Yeah, okay, it was cool. really very liberating. I mean, back in the film days, I was one of those photographers where the frame is sacred. Mm -hmm. So in order to achieve that on Polaroid to test my exposure and everything and the composition and on film, I inevitably, invariably had to be on a tripod, right? Uh, so I'd have a camera where the backs would, would be flipped. I'd have a Polaroid back, then I'd shoot, I'd shoot Polaroid first, then film, then Polaroid. Because oh. back in those days, there was nothing worse than chasing the Polaroid, which meant that you got it on the Polaroid, and then the photo, 
it, everything had moved or changed, oh, or oh right? Goodness. Yeah. So in order to avoid that, I set up this system where I went film, Polaroid, film, very in quick succession, and you'd have to say, don't move. Right, so, so for me, digital was really freeing because I could take this picture from here and that picture then again and I could use both of them mm -hmm. in the final magazine. Plus, uh, I like instant gratification. And to get that click and there, I, there's the picture that, that, that we can use, that's the picture that's actually going to be used, mm -hmm. um, is great. The other huge crucial thing was that when traveling, as I do a lot for location work, um, in the old days, I would have to FedEx two weeks prior to the shoot a whole big box of film and Polaroid. Oh. And a couple of times, those things never even made it to the shoot. They were oh, stuck I'm in sure customs. You're shooting in crazy locations and That's stuff. That's right, Bali. <laughs> By shooting in Bali, and, the, and, the, and all of the film and Polaroid got stuck in customs in Jakarta. And I had my assistant's uh, digital camera, but with a little bit of film, just enough to shoot both things, but each picture both ways. And I used essentially his digital camera as a Polaroid, as a sort of preview. And then I got back and I would compare the two images. Mm -hmm. And it so happened that I preferred quite a few of the digital images to the film images. And at that time, it was all about how could you, can you get film to, uh, digital to look like film? But you could, it was the first early days of being able to put filters on in Photoshop. So we did this um, story where half the pictures were actually printed um, in the magazine were on film, and then half were digital, made to look like film. And actually, in some cases, we'd have the background that was film uh, comped with the foreground that was digital. Oh, it's so cool. So I came home, and I've been doing this a long time. My wife has known me my whole career, and I said to her, I put it on the computer, and I said, tell me which one's which, which is digital and which is film and mm -hmm. she got every single one wrong so are you that, serious so at that point i thought fuck it what is the point of you know traveling through it back in the day traveling through security with film that you know 120 film in these canisters in plastic bags it looks like plastic explosives you know the early days of 9 11 and all of that stuff yeah. so it became increasingly problematic, a real hassle to, to fly with film because you never wanted to put it in the hold because it could be scanned by yeah, the x-ray machine. Yeah, I was just say, machines. doesn't it get bothered by x-rays and stuff? Well, actually, the higher sensitivity films would and could. So we'd always ask to hand check it to go through, you know, the not to go through the, yeah. the x-ray machine. So it was incredibly uh, stressful. Um, and that went. And now with digital, you, you travel with all of that equivalent of film boxes in a little wallet. In a little memory card. With five little memory cards in it yeah. that are oblivious and impervious to x-rays and stuff. So it's been great. Okay. And actually, I also like the fact that when you have the, the monitor and the picture comes up on the laptop screen, it's backlit and it's quite big. Mm -hmm. So you're not peering down into a little, onto a little Polaroid anymore. Yeah, no, no, It's a no, nice exactly. big screen that reminds me of you know, the dark slide, the old four by five yeah. cameras where you're looking at a ground glass screen and it's backlit. Mm -hmm. And so it's kind of very photographic still as well. So Cool. So, but I appreciate and understand that there has been a return to shooting film in the last three, four years maybe. Yeah. And there's a new generation who didn't grow up shooting it like I did who are then fascinated by that whole process. Yeah, no, of course. And it feels more authentic, and it's like the real photography and stuff like that. Um, so there are these dialectic swings back and forth, but I think both are really valid. The film is extremely beautiful, and a lot of my great, greatest hits were obviously shot on, on film. So um, if I could have the quality of film and those kinds of experiences with the immediacy and ease of digital, that would be perfect. Yeah, well, I mean, at least you got to experience both worlds. I did. Because you know, it takes the rise of the digital age. So. Yes, and it was incredibly fast. You know, all of these uh, C41 uh, labs in New York disappeared so quickly. The oh. whole industry gone and, you know, uh, conventional retouching. We'd make prints and then there would be a, a guy, a retoucher, who would literally, with a paintbrush, and a blower brush, airbrush, air retouch 
this print. So that was different as well. Wow. So all of those, those guys either had to adapt and get into the get early... Get new skill. <laughs> get in the new skill of Photoshop or do something else. And a lot didn't. And therefore, God knows what they've done, but they've had to do something else in life. So mm-hmm. hopefully the labs will start coming back again. Yeah. to service a whole new generation of young photographers who want to do that. Mm-hmm. But I'm not going back. You're not going back. There's no going back. <laughs> cool. That's it. That's, that was fantastic. Right. Cool. I think we're awesome. done. Now I'm going to do right. one more thing. Yeah, totally. Thank you so much, yeah, MJ. Course, you were fantastic. Time. Thank you for that. Cool.